In its quest to provide an open forum for discussion of controversial issues, this station allows hosts and their guests to express themselves without any significant censorship. You're advised that any views expressed by the hosts or their guests are not necessarily the views of Tuggy Entertainment or its partners. Let's go, girls. From New York City to Los Angeles, Powered Up with Beck and Franklin is giving women of all ages permission to live the life they've always dreamed of. Why live in black and white when you can choose the brilliance of 3D and Technicolor? Each week, Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin and their high-powered guests will be here to cheer you on, to share their challenges, their successes, and what they've learned along the way. It's all about women supporting women. The stories and practical tips on sex, beauty, money, and so much more are designed to help you reconnect to the powerful woman you are. Fabulous knows no limits. Now it's time for you to expand your boundaries. Here are Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Here I am. (laughs) Crazy. That's okay. I'm here. Good, it's good. Well, we have a special guest co-host today. We have Robin Boyd, and she is a regular on our Military Mom Talk Radio. She is also a regular on Motherhood Talk Radio, and she has to be my very good friend, and she's pitching in in the last minute, which I really do appreciate, because Linda Franklin is AWOL. I think she's probably stuck in that terrible Manhattan traffic. <laughs> I'm sure. You know, I was having, uh, I'm picking up a little friend today. She's in junior high, and we were talking about being in the big city because a lot of their troops, uh, Girl Scout troops, which I, I thought I would kind of put a little plug in there. Today is our 101st birthday. So I'm pretty, pretty excited to have an opportunity to say happy birthday, GSUSA. But that anyway. Is great. We were talking about being in the big city because a lot of the troops do go to the uh, go to New York, and one of the best things that they do when they go to New York City is Blue Man Group. I have to say that's one of their favorite places to go. <laughs> How fun is that? Well, that's such a good reason to get powered up. A hundred and one years for the Girl Scout. Um, it's so great, Robin. This show, this format, is Powered Up Talk Radio, and every week we talk about things that power us up and. Mm-hmm. You know, I got to tell you, this has been a really difficult week for me. I'm not going to get into it other than to say that there's a hearing. I'm not in trouble, but there's a hearing on Friday that has completely stressed me out. I don't know how people do it. I I can't even tolerate a traffic ticket. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) the idea of me getting powered up about something this week was just getting powered up getting through the week. That was a big deal for me. Well, and, you know, I think that's when we, uh, especially as women, not that men don't do it, uh, but I think we as women have to sort of ground ourselves and you mentally regroup and whatever it is that you need to find the power, whether it, when we have uh, Susie Manning on, she talks about getting out and and clearing your mind and clearing your brain. If it means um, when we've talked to Suzanne Phillips, Dr. Suzanne Phillips, talking about finding the the place in our soul that we need to establish what it is uh, that is the most important thing for us to focus on. That's where we ground ourselves, we regroup, and then we get the power to move on. And I've known so many remarkable women. You are absolutely one of them, Sandra. And if anybody is going to find the power to do it, you're it. And you've been an inspiration to me as well as so many women that I know of. So um, you're going to, you're going to rock it this week, this, this week. I know you are. Oh, well, thank you for that, Robin. You know, it's the funniest thing when you go through difficulty. How many people tell you, like, how strong you are and you're an inspiration? And, you know, you sit there going, but I'm falling apart apart inside. What do you mean? Exactly. You know, it's funny. Mm-hmm. I look at, um, I had a post uh, put up on Inspire Me Today. Um, I saw it, yeah. Wins. Uh, site, you know, about divorce and things like that. And, you know, and I try to make the things that have happened, you know, funny and and powerful and inspiring and enlightening, Um, you know, but when you're going through it, you you just seem to stumble forward, even though, like, when I look at my Facebook page or I look at, you know, the Inspire Me Today post or even these radio shows, it sounds like it's so easy. Mm -hmm. I know. And that's where I think it's important. 
Oh, oh hi, Lisa. There's another country to from. <laughs> no, well, and you know why I'm late, and I apologize. I We had a meditation this afternoon that was rocketed you out of your mind, and it took me a little bit longer to walk home than I thought it would because I was, like, walking in a on cloud nine. <laughs> 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 so I, I so, apologize for that. Now, but that Linda, you're all the more empowered. Um, I know we're so powered up over here, and Robin is powered up, and you have a great book that you're reading that I'd like you to share with the audience. And, Robin, I'd love your take on this because it really sounds like a great book. Um, it's called The Unfeathered, Untethered Soul, and it's by Michael Singer. And it is... But the reason I like it is because he's very, very clear and gives great examples of, of what we're doing um, to ourselves. You know, some, some of the other spiritual leaders, they get really involved and they use – sometimes it's hard to understand them because they're talking in language we don't understand. But Michael talks in language we can understand, and it, and it makes it very, very easy. Um, and basically, it's about getting out of our head, about not about consciously thinking about not thinking, uh, hmm. staying staying grounded, and uh, opening up our hearts. I, I, the example I gave to Sandra early on today was that voice that's constantly going on in our head. You know, the one that's always, it's one minute it's okay, the next minute something is terrible, it's very judgmental, and whatever it is, it never stops. It's like a constant barrage of talk and chatter. And so in, my, in the book, Michael says, you know, give this voice, make it like a person, bring it out, put it, you know, put it on the floor, put on a dress on it, put a, put a suit on it, and, and pretend that it's, some, it's, it's somebody that, um, that you know. Now, if this person was constantly chattering, constantly being judgmental, one minute everything is good and the next minute it's horrible, always second-guessing, is this a person you would want around you? Would this be somebody you'd consider a friend? Wow. And I that think is like the person that... in my own head is the least person I want to be around. And, and most people would say, no, this, this is not a person that I would want in my life. And, I'll, you know, and, and so if it's a friend, I may have to think about getting rid of this friend because it's not doing me any good. And yet we walk around with this thing in our head all the time, and we don't even consciously think about getting rid of it. Hmm. Huh. And it does a lot so of damage. A, is it about acknowledging that it's there, being aware of it, or just uh, shutting it out, tuning it out? No, nope. the first thing is, is awareness. Being aware that it's there and what triggers, uh, you know, the triggers that you have. Um, so that you, what we, what I think that we, we all want to achieve is freedom from ourselves and that crazy voice that goes on in our head but it's not something and you said when i just came in you said it was easy it's not easy it's like anything else you've got to work at it um maybe work isn't the right word but mm -hmm. it's you know co just consciously be aware of of the things that you're doing what i mean so that you can stop it before it begins and i think if you learn to stop it, it's going to go away gradually and to the point where you don't even have to think about it anymore. It just won't be there. Hmm. I think wow. you can almost apply that to anything. You can apply it to a behavior. You can b apply it to a, uh, a concern or a worry and you almost can encapsulate it so that you can conquer it. If if that's what kind of what you're getting at, Linda, well, it's, it kind it, of sounds like that. Well, it's 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 not even it's it's concrete. It, it's just the way you want to live your life. Oh, I see. It's okay. a discipline that you need to do because if you want to live in the moment, which is the only thing that we have, mm. that moment is too often occupied by what's going on in our head, and we're losing the moment. So if we lose enough moments, um, you know, it's, it's not a good thing, and we end up, 
you know, angry, frustrated, fearful, trying to mm-hmm. protect ourselves from every, anything that's going to upset our apple cart. And we spend so much time trying to protect ourselves that we're losing the enjoyment of living. Boy, that's wow. absolutely true. Because I think so, so many times we get consumed with things that are unnecessary in life and we've lost everything that could have been so important in our lives. Yeah. So, you know, again, it's a conscious decision. Do I want to continue uh, living that that life where it's, it's fear-based and, and, and always listening to that voice that really isn't – it's out to protect our egos. It's not out to protect our spirit or our hearts. And, right. and it's, it's time to do something about it, and only we can do it. That's you know it, nobody can do it for us. It's a, it's a conscious decision um, that we have to do. And I know that lately, you know, in the last you know months, I have been when I'm ready to go into my old behavior because you know whether it's jumping at at my husband or or you know something, I I stop it because I feel it coming. Because you can feel it coming because your heart starts to beat fatter, faster, and you kind of you feel constricted. And I said, uh-oh, here it comes. And I said, no, I'm going to let it go. And I, it's, as I'm, as I'm like pushing, consciously pushing that away. You know, and I can only imagine that would affect intimacy. You know, our show topic today is, um, uh, is on impotency as a prostate cancer survivor and a result of the treatments. Um, and there's, you know, all these terms we throw around, erectile dysfunction things. But if you don't have that relationship and the monkey in your head keeps chattering so that it makes it difficult for you to connect with others, I would imagine that just throws a wet blanket on what we're going to talk about today. Well, like everything else, life is living in the moment, and if we're focused on our, you know, uh, an illness or, or, you know, something that's going wrong in our lives, that's what that's what our focus is, and we're missing out. So, I, I like what Valerie Harper said this week. Let's not have a funeral before we have a funeral. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, our wishes go out to Valerie Harper and her family. I had the joy of working with her many years ago and her um, charity that goes through Denny's, uh, Save the Children. I think she's an outstanding woman. Uh, I'd like to take us to commercial break now. And when we come back, we are going to talk to prostate cancer survivor Michael Russer, who's going to talk to us about what we can do if we are faced with this with our partner. We've got lots more Powered Up with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin after these messages. It's time to devote time to yourself and strap yourself in for a fun, down-to-earth, enthusiastic, compassionate, easy-to-understand discussion on the unlimited ways you can be all that you want to be. Join us for B Institute Radio with Christine McKee on Toginet Radio. Each week, Christine will have lively and open discussions and interviews, share stories and case studies, and hear from experts on the topic of the week. Christine, a registered psychologist from Australia and published author of Be By Design, How I Be Is Up To Me, hosts lively discussions and interviews every Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. I am not the woman I used to be. I'm free with Minister Diane Jones. Monday nights at 10, 9 central on Toginet. This is your chance, ladies, to hear stories of hope and healing from someone who's been there. Someone who has fought back from the horrors of incest. Minister Diane's innocence was stolen from her in the land of alcoholism and mental illness, which led to her being emotionally, physically, and sexually abused by her parents. Yet in spite of this trauma, she has gone on to become a successful wife, mother, registered nurse, and minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not the woman I used to be. I'm free is a straight-up show to enlighten you and to lighten your load. Do not let the weight of this world or the things that have happened to you control your life. For more on the show and Diane and her book, The Story of Me, email her directly from her show page here on Toginet. Then, join us for I'm Not the Woman I Used to Be. I'm free with Minister Diane Jones. Monday nights at 10, 9 central on toginet.com. We're 
We're back with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Here's more Powered Up with Beck and Franklin. Hey, ladies, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Linda Franklin. I want to thank Robin Boyd for jumping on a call with us. Uh, from coast to coast, we've got you covered with the topics that you need to know about the most. And today's topic, Linda, is a very, very difficult topic for a lot of couples to talk about. It's difficult for a lot of men to talk about. And we have a prostate cancer survivor coming on today to talk to us about how you can go from what could be a very difficult situation in your relationship to something beautiful. No, well, absolutely. I guess it's, it's all the way you, you feel about it. And, um, you know, a lot of people that have had an illness uh, say it's the best thing that ever happened to them because it changed their lives. And I'm anxious to hear uh, Michael's story. I am too. Michael, are you with us? I am with you both. <laughs> Good afternoon. Hi. So, Michael, I would like to know, like, what happened? What, you know, for for people who haven't experienced this, especially for women who are listening today, um, when you get a diagnosis of prostate cancer, what was the first thing you thought about? I know what I thought about. Well, um, keeping in mind that everybody who's died in my family has died of cancer, uh, except for one unfortunate accident, um, it was pretty much like, Okay, this is very serious. And it's interesting because the uh, the original biopsy showed it as being not very aggressive. And I said, take it out now. And they did. And they found out it was much, much more aggressive. And uh, so aggressive that they had to do immediate follow-up uh, radiation after that. So the thought is, you know what? Um, I'm facing my mortality uh, much in a much more real fashion than uh, than I had been. And so that was kind of a wake up. You start thinking about what's important and what really matters. Uh, no more someday. Today is someday. How long ago did you get this diagnosis, Michael? Uh, Linda, I got that back in November of 2011, and I had my prostate removed uh, in at the end, Jan well, December 29th of 2011. Well, how did you discover it? Was it a PSA test or you weren't feeling well or it was just through a general exam? No, it was a PSA test. I had not had an enlarged prostate uh, and they were watching. See, there's a lot of confusion about PSA. Uh, it's not just the number, the size of the number. It's whether it's moving or not. Uh, yeah. And if it moves up and it moves up quickly, then that's a problem. Mine had been level at about just under two for most of my life. And then all of a sudden it started edging up just ever so, so slowly. And thanks to my doctors, we, we started doing more frequent tests. And then uh, it jumped quite a bit, almost doubled from June to uh, October. And wow. they said, you need to come and do a biopsy, which is an experience I'm not going to recommend to too many people. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll avoid the graphic <laughs> metaphor, but just imagine a big stapler. That's all I can say. No, and it, it, oh. I think of a lot of people, I guess, especially men, because it's you know it's a it's a male uh, cancer that they think, oh, prostate cancer, I'll get the seeds, or I'll do this, or it's very slow moving, and 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 they don't. I don't think they take it maybe as seriously as, as they should. Well, one of the problems, and this is, I'm fine. I've done a lot of research. I've talked to a lot of men and women who are who make up couples who are affected by uh, prostate cancer and especially the, the uh, resulting impotence, which is not 100% of the time, but it happens a lot, mm -hmm. is that there's a lot of lack of communication that the caregivers, the surgeons, the, the radiologists, et cetera, they, their job, their primary job in their mind, as it should be, is, hey, we're going to make sure you stay alive as long as possible. And, oh, by the way, you might become impotent or slightly impotent, or, but we can fix you up. You know, we've got all kinds of things we can fix you up with. The number one complaint I've heard, Sandra and Linda, is I wish I had heard more about the impact of the treatment. Yeah. So, yeah. Because, because, you know, if quality of life is an issue, it does uh, it can impact your quality of life. And uh, so it's, uh, 
Yeah, it's significant. It's not just life-threatening. It's quality of life-threatening as well. Well, I think that's a shortcoming on, on, on doctors uh, in all specialties. You know, they, they just want to run and fix you up, but they don't tell you uh, about the after effects of, of what they're going to do. And, and I think that that's something that they need to take a closer look at. Yeah, and they're, 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 they're a little bit um, uh, reluctant to do that for whatever reason. So I, part of the, my research that I'm doing is, is hopefully going to be a, um, a, uh, a supported study by the Prostate Cancer Foundation, um, uh, ideally under their auspices, uh, to, uh, to uh, help physicians look at a sanctioned study and say, oh, I guess this is a problem, because that's the only thing they're going to listen to. Yeah. Well, and Michael, I know you're not a doctor, but you've done exhaustive research on this and talked to men and women all over the world. Are, mm -hmm. are, is everybody reporting kind of similar things after surgery, or does it really vary? You know, does the impotency vary? Like some people, and I'm going to sound stupid, are they a little bit impotent or a lot impotent? You know, does it well, vary? Yeah, it, it does vary. Um, and uh, it's not just impotence. A lot of men also suffer from incontinence, which is, you know, come on, you know, really? Uh, not a good that, thing. Yeah, it's not a fun <laughs> thing. Let's put no. it that way. And uh, so there's both. And, uh, yeah, uh, I would say in most cases, depending on, on the type of treatment, when you go through a radical prostatectomy, it, it will almost always result in some level of impotence. Now, that may come back. It may not. Uh, mine does not look like it's going to come back, and um, but frankly, I really don't care at this point because I'm having way more fun than I ever did before. Okay. Uh, and uh, but uh, you know, men uh, that I've talked to uh, and their wives, and wives are just as affected by this. By the way, of course, they, yeah, oh yeah, they take on many wives. It's really interesting. Many wives and female partners, uh, even though intellectually they know it's not their fault they start having feelings like, you know, maybe he's just not as attracted to me as he used to be. Mm -hmm. And, or it goes the other way and they're going like, you know, come on, you know, you can do this. Come on, come on. And putting pressure on the poor guy. Well, he's yeah. already feeling like he's no longer a man. Uh, he's feeling, uh, you know, because especially in Western culture, you know, we, we equate our manhood with, you know, how big and how stiff we can get. And, and uh, nothing could, I am living proof, that is not the case. <laughs> I've got a whole different kind of measurement for that. Well, okay. Well, I want to hear, you know, what, what did you do? So you had, you had this, the radical surgery, and then obviously you had this problem. Um, how long did it take you to get out of the poor me uh, part and get and into something that really worked for you? Well, um, I, you know, it's uh, I was not I, I was not in a relationship during this process, and uh, so and I wasn't particularly interested in starting one uh, for obvious reasons. And uh, but uh, uh, last September, uh, after this, after the uh, all the radiation was done, I, I I met someone actually quite serendipitously, and we came to this point where. We knew it was likely to become intimate, whatever that meant. Um, and I first thing I did was sit down with her and say, look, here's what's going on. And she was marvelous. She was wonderful. And that illustrated to me one of the most important aspects of this process when couples are going through this is communication. And what I've heard, however, in many of the cases and much of the research I've done, I've had extensive interviews with people as Sanders are from people from all over the world, is that the man tends to shut down or the woman tends to shut down or they didn't have good communication to begin with. Okay. And that's not a great foundation to get started. No, and it probably is probably easier if you're starting fresh with somebody new because you haven't got that whole other load yes, of baggage sir. that you're carrying along with you. Well, that's if that baggage is there. I have to tell you, though, I have run into couples whose, co whose communication was awesome. In fact, this one couple, he's in his 70s, and, uh, and I just knew this was going to be an awesome interview. He was in his, he's in his 70s, and his wife is well in her upper 60s. And part of the interview is, well, how many times you know, were you intimate uh, a month prior to the prostate cancer? He says, oh, maybe eight, ten times a month. Really? Well, yeah. And <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Good for stuff. him. <laughs> well, oh no! Oh, it gets better. Oh, it gets and, better. <laughs> and so it's and he's he's impotent. And I said, well, uh, you know, uh, and oh by the way, how long would you spend making love? And he said, oh, you know, half hour or so, which is about typical. Twenty to thirty minutes is typical. And I've got a little bit to say about that, by the way. Uh, and then. He, then I ask him, well, now let's bring it to fast forward to today, uh, dealing with what you're doing with. He says, how many times a month? And he starts laughing. He says, oh, 20 plus times a month. And, wow. That's and, practically <laughs> every day. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. But believe me, some of these people are doing it several times a day. And uh, <laughs> I, I know. And, uh, and then he – and then he uh, – I, I asked him, well, how much time are you spending? He says, way more time. So wow. they are part of the 15 research has been shown that about 15 percent of the couples out there experiencing impotence actually have grown far closer, both uh, emotionally and especially physically. In other words, they are experiencing much greater depth and quality of uh, and frequency of uh, physical intimacy than they did when they were functioning normal. Now, is this is this I, including intercourse? Well, not necessarily. Right. I mean, Not so let me ask you a dumb question. If if you, if, you know, if you are impotent, is something like Viagra going to help or that is not an, that, that won't help at this well, point? For me, it does not help. Okay. Uh, drugs do not work for me. Okay. And, um, and for, for some it does, but others not. But here's the thing. What he was talking about was not necessarily intercourse. Right. And um, so... Uh, when I met my partner, I, I, it was it was. I, I first of all, I, I boosted the dose of Cialis as about as high as you could go, and then same time, this was the first real intimate weekend, right? And then she's sitting on the bed watching all this, and then and then uh, there's this thing called Muse, which is a urethral suppository, and I'll let your imagination uh, kind of go with yeah. that one. Yeah. Uh, and it was the highest dose possible. That you know what? Then. I'm going to leave you guys right now because we've got to go to commercial break, but I'm riveted. I can't wait to hear <laughs> this. Everybody, you're going to have to tune in after the break. We're going to find out what happened on this date. And for those of you listening today, this is Powered Up Talk Radio with Linda Franklin and Sandra Beck. Our guest today is Michael Russer. Our topic is impotency. You're not going to want to miss this. I know I can't wait till I come back after the break. We've got lots more powered up with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin after these messages. This is for all you girls about 42. Tossing pennies into the fountain of youth. Are you fascinated by the stories behind the stories? The people behind their masks? The truth about people's failures and redemptions? in both their business and personal lives. Then Off the Record Secrets of with host Judy Schreiner is for you. It's people's secrets that make them interesting, but very few folks are willing to reveal them unless they trust that their information will be treated with accuracy, fairness, and respect. People have been entrusting their secrets to longtime business journalist Judy Schreiner for the last 25 years, and now she's bringing her expertise and impressive contact list to Rockstar Radio Network. Tune in and call in as host Judy Schreiner talks to guests off the record as they reveal new secrets each Tuesday at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. Believe in your fairy tale to make your zing come true. I love it. Debbie Glickman and Deanna Cohen know it. Join these soul sisters on Togginet.com. Believe in your fairy tale to make your zing come true. Showcases two sides. One, to help entrepreneurs showcase their products and tell their story of their happily ever after. And two, to interview people who have realized their own fairy tale and doing something to benefit others. This show is here to help folks who have an idea and want to get it off the ground, as well as to inspire people to make the world a better place by doing something extraordinary or out of the box to help others. Both of these entrepreneurs have their own businesses and websites. With more information on their passions and successes, first for Debbie, fairytalewishesinc.com. And for Deanna, thenextbigzing.com. Believe in your fairy tale to make your zing come true. With the Soul Sisters, Debbie Glickman and Deanna Cohen on toginet.com.
We're back with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Here's more Powered Up with Beck and Franklin. This is for all you girls about 42. Hey, ladies, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Linda Franklin. And from coast to coast, we've got you covered. And today's topic with Michael Russer is on impotency. For those of you who missed the first half of the show, you can pick us up on iTunes. You can go to the .com by the same name, Powered Up Talk Radio, or you can go to our host station, toginet.com, and listen to our prior broadcast. But I'm going to go right back to you, Michael, because when we left you, you were on a very, very important date, the first date with the current uh, lady partner in your life, and yes. you had taken the highest dose of Cialis. You had done something that I won't repeat. Go and listen to the earlier broadcast if you want to hear it. But tell us what happened next. Well, apparently nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm, look, I'm looking down and I'm going, Steve, don't let me down. I named him Steve because it just seemed appropriate. I says, come on. And meanwhile, she's sitting on the bed just just look at this look like this poor guy. And then I whip out the vacuum pump. All right. Now, the vacuum pump is to help, you know, well, it creates a vacuum. So blood flows, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going, whew, 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 like I'm, you know, like I'm just ready to pump up this this basketball, and <laughs> and I can see it into my mind. <laughs> me too. Well, only a guy here's, say here's the thing: if, if, if you're not careful, it vacuums other things, like my left nut, and that's very <laughs> very painful. <laughs> <laughs> and and I and she's just looking at me like you poor schlup. And 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 I said, you know what? Screw all this stuff. Let's just let's just lay together. And let me tell you what happened. We had the most incredible, loving, intimate session that lasted for hours and hours and hours. And that was just the start. Um uh, since then, our levels of intimacy have grown incredibly. Our average time that we spend, we actually have to schedule uh, enough time because the minimum time we will spend making love is two hours, two to four hours. And, um, uh, and, and hours? Well, hours. Yes. Not minutes, Sandra. Hours. Not hours. <laughs> yes. I know. I'm like, all right, and, there's going to be and, some, and, and some you might take, conversation well, tonight. You might, you might be thinking, well, they're just kind of fooling around or anything. Well, okay, uh, let me just say this, that my partner, uh, and I know she's listening now, so she's probably going to be a little embarrassed, but I will say this, that, and this has never happened for either one of us, and we're both very experienced. This has never happened for either one of us. She will climax a minimum of three to five times, minimum per session, and 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 uh, occasionally seven to nine times and at one point thirteen times per session, and uh, to the point where she's you know we almost have to call like nine one one. I've almost been thrown <laughs> out of my apartment, and 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 so and neither one of us has have ever had that kind of an experience. My the intensity of the experience that I have is to the point where like I'm just about my whole body is like shaking, and uh, I mean it's it is. Okay, let me put this in perspective if I can. You talked about intercourse. Intercourse is really was is a is a biological thing mainly for, you know, uh, propagation of the species and 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 such. And uh and uh, so I went to my doctor and my surgeon I says, "Look, I'm having this incredible experience which he didn't understand at all uh with with my partner, but you know, I haven't had intercourse in a long time. Is there something I can take? He says, well, you can take an injection. I says, you have to stick a needle where? Well, anyway, uh, so I took this injection and this one time, and and yes, it did work. It gave me uh, the equivalent of a, uh, and I, I hope we can say blue steel on the radio, but blue steel hard on uh, for about three hours, and we made beautiful love. And in the, in the what people would call the traditional uh, way, yeah, but it stayed three hours. Like, yeah, it, well, yeah, it, yeah. But here's here's the thing. My partner and I looked at each other afterwards, and we both knew, without even saying a word, that as wonderful as that was, it didn't come close to what we were experiencing before. 
Are you doing tantric sex as, um, as part of your uh, routine or ritual? Well, we started out with that, and then we kind of evolved our own processes. It's um, there's there's quite a bit that goes to this, and uh, but we started out. That was the first thing we did, and we started out um, using some of those methods, and yeah. then we became very adept at listening to each other's bodies, and um, and so now. I mean, literally, uh, I mean, it, sometimes we will make, you know, sometimes we'll be intimate for hours twice a day. And um, and unlike traditional uh, intercourse where everybody's exhausted, um, the uh, or the guy rolls over and falls asleep and she's still just warming up, um, we have more energy afterwards than we did when we started. Do you so use a lot of toys? No, none, zero. No toys? None, none. <laughs> None. Okay. No toys. No sup. No no implements. No supplements. No nothing. And it is um, it is you just must. the most amazing. And but here's the thing: we are not unique. Fifteen percent of couples who have uh, who who uh, experience uh, impotence have this kind of experience. I, I, it sounds terrific to me. I think it, <laughs> I mean I can't even imagine how terrific it must be. But I you know it's. Um... I think most women would absolutely love that. Well, here's it, Linda. Here's the thing, and I and actually Sandra and I talked about this for a while. Men and women obviously are very different. Um, and you know, when a man gets a hard on, he's got he, he. There's this biological imperative that says, "Take care of this now." And what was interesting is I felt that again as soon as that when that when I used the injection, and it actually interfered with the beautiful uh, lovemaking that we had uh, prior. I mean, it was great, but it wasn't anywhere near as good as what we had before. And so in, in, in our biology is set up so that the, a normally functioning man and his partner will have a very, very difficult time understanding or getting their head wrapped around what, what I'm saying right now. And that's one of the reasons why um, I work with uh, couples who are experiencing impotence, because frankly, they're a hell of a lot more coachable, and uh, they can, you know, they can, they're they're willing to try just about anything. And uh, because you know they 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 lost something, they feel that they've lost something. And what I'm here to tell them is that it hasn't even started yet. I'm going to ask another really dumb question because I've I've just not had the experience. Are you you're able to have an orgasm? Yes, and they're far more intense than what I've had before. And okay. That is, and that is being completely flaccid. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, I, you know, I wasn't sure, but I, from the way you were talking, I, I certainly uh, surmise that that had to be the case. Because I mean, it, when you make, is that's probably the ultimate goal is to is to have that orgasmic experience. Uh, now, let me let me address that because that is a, you 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 worded that in such the perfect way. When you really want to make and have an experience unbelievable intimacy, there are no goals. Right. You're just enjoying one another. Process. It is, it, it is a, a sense of being. And that's, that's part of the problem with normal functioning. It becomes very, very goal-oriented. And unfortunately, he reaches the goal before she does. And um, even though she might say, oh, that was wonderful, dear, you bastard. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It, you know, it is true. And even if, you, even if you do happen to reach climax together and you've had a wonderful thing, it is true that, that there, you know, a man has been exhausted and, you know, the, there's always been this whole big thing about the cuddling afterwards. And, you know, it's. It's, it's, it's we can't get enough. We can't get enough, and um, and and it's and the thing is, is it's 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 not it's not this uh, this 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 kind of sense of urgency that you see, you know, people ripping their right. da, da 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 because that's just there's a difference between having sex and being intimate, being physically intimate. Absolutely, absolutely. Because I bet you there's more people having sex than than people that are actually being intimate with one another. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, physical intimacy, true physical intimacy, the absolute foundation to that is is emotional intimacy. Yeah. Uh, 
It's my it feeling is. that it's impossible to have this kind of intimacy, physical intimacy with somebody unless you are very, very emotionally connected with them. And I know I couldn't. And um, and I and I I know my partner couldn't as well. What? Um, Isn't that so what's the difference? Oh. For, mm-hmm. for most people out there, Michael, like you say, physical intimacy and emotional intimacy, you know, to me, those are just two different words. What separates it? Well, you know, the the emotional intimacy is the uh, is is the caring you have for the other person. And when I was doing my interviews, I'd rate it from zero to ten. Zero is, well, we're just roommates, you know, and ten is I think about you all the time. When I see you, I want to hold your hands. I want to, I want to hug you, and and so on. Um, physical intimacy is when there is a, a, a much deeper level of touching, uh, and it, there's a sensuous uh, stimulation, uh, and uh, and and uh, often to the point of orgasm, uh, and, and in this case, many many orgasms. Uh, and so, but the orgasm is not necessarily the goal. That happens to be one of the outcomes, but just one of them. And uh, and so, uh, you know, for example, this is something that most men will not understand what I'm about to say. When I'm able to bring my partner to, to climax in the way that we almost get kicked out of the apartment building, um, the... Uh, <laughs> Care to, care, care to talk about that? <laughs> I actually had one neighbor. We call her the nosy neighbor. She was downstairs, and she's single in her 40s, and I think probably divorced or something. She literally, at 7 in the morning, knocked on my door saying, is everything okay? Is <laughs> the walls are shaking. <laughs> and I says, well, we're kind of busy now, but, yeah, everything's just fine. So I thought, I'm going to go down and talk to her. And uh, so I went down. I said, you know, I'm so sorry. I says, my partner tends to be somewhat verbal uh, when we make love. And she says, well, you know, I've heard it the last few nights. And uh, but this morning, it sounded like somebody was being murdered. (laughs) Oh, gosh. I I bet your ears were glued to the wall. Yeah, I bet they were. I bet they were. Well, I want everybody to stay glued to the show because I need to take us to commercial break. My name is Sandra Beck. I'm here with Linda Franklin. And our uh, guest today is Michael Russer. And we're talking about some of the unexpected benefits, surprises, and treats that have happened as he survived prostate cancer and experienced impotency. We've got lots more powered up with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin after these messages. Are you ready to start rocking that woohoo? that only you do because Lisa Stedman is on a mission. She will dare you, challenge you, enlighten you, provoke and empower you to bring out that inner woohoo. Lisa is an internationally acclaimed best-selling author. She is a breakup expert, a brand consultant, CEO of Woohoo Inc. and the Woohoo Radio Network. She will show you how to take your boohoo and turn it into woohoo. Get rebellious and get real. Get your dreams off the back burner. Get inspired and motivated to take action. Start rocking that woohoo that only you do in love, life, and business. She is going to be here for you every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Only here on the Woohoo Radio Network. Familia, faith. Identity, tradición. Latina life is never boring, but it can be muy dramática. So how do you coexist between the old school ways of la abuela and the new school life you're creating for yourself without losing your faith, familia, identity, or tradiciones? Welcome to Living Latina with Francesca Escoto, where culture curls and curves collide in one spicy cross-cultural conversation that will leave you begging for mas, 
Francesca tackles all the important issues, from politics to family values, to religion to, you guessed it, relationships and men. As Chief Everything Officer at the WOW Factor, Francesca is passionate about showing women of all cultures, ages, and lifestyles how to rock what they've got with style, sass, and smarts. Be sure to join her every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time for Living Latina, only on the WooHoo Radio Network. Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Here's more Powered Up with Beck and Franklin. Hey, ladies, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Linda Franklin, and our topic today is impotency, and our guest is Michael Russer. And, man, we've been burning up the line since we went on break. We've got <laughs> questions all over. i got emails coming in. I've got posts. I have questions about, oh, my God, everything from text sex to foreplay. What do you do if you can't get it up? Um, how do you start? Do you have that conversation with your partner? Uh, where do you begin? Uh, boy, take your pick, Michael. We got a, we got a Donnie Brook over here. Oh, my gosh. Well, <clears throat> I did warn you. Anyway. Um, Michael, the, let me just, uh, you know, yeah, while, you were talking about the emotional component, and that's a yes. really big one. In fact, I mean, the research I've done, it shows that most people, men and women, uh, have affairs because they don't have the emotional connection with their mate, and that's what they're looking for. The sex comes mm -hmm. as, a, as a byproduct. Yeah, well, the sex is, is filling in a hole that can't be filled. No pun intended. I mean, it just... It, you are full it, of those puns. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's a really, it becomes a uh, kind of a uh, distraction from the, from the feeling of not having the emotional connection. They're not likely having any other emotional connection with whoever they're doing it with, but they're, 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 but they're uh, kind of uh, you know, diluting that, that empty feeling of emptiness by going out and getting, uh, having a, you know, sex with somebody else. Uh, the emotional connection uh, comes from, you know, that, that, that is absolutely foundational and fundamental to everything. And that, that's the foundation of trust of being completely open. One of the biggest problems I found in interviewing these, uh, these couples uh, is that uh, a lot of times they're not communicating and they shut down. And, uh, you know, especially in this country, uh, men look at this, they don't like talking about this issue. They don't like admitting that they even have a problem with this. And uh, so, you know, I, I take the position that says, look, this, is, this has nothing to do with your manhood. Uh, if you can please your mate, uh, in, a, in a way that just you know blows her mind, then you're more men than most men, as far right. as I'm concerned. Yeah, you know? and, and it's like the women that have had you know mastectomies. They they're very very sheepish about their sexuality and 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 sharing that with their mate because they don't feel quite the woman that they were before. But it's all if you know if you just sit down and you, it's just that you know that connection uh, that can get rid of that you know that fear. Yeah, and because here's the thing is that when I look, when I you know when I'm with my partner I I you know it, I see someone who I see, I see another human being not just a woman not just a beautiful woman but another human being someone who I connect with on many different levels if I didn't have that there's no way we could have that kind of experience right yeah. And just just it couldn't happen. So that's foundational. By the way, that goes for any kind of uh, any kind of uh, foundation for any kind of uh, you know physical intimacy. The the thing here though is is that for normal couples, couples who are normally functioning, where he has no trouble getting it up and the whole thing, if they want to experience this kind of of incredibly intimate uh, and deep fulfilling uh, experience. They really need to forget everything they've ever been taught about what it means to make love to somebody. They really do. And, and then start 
from scratch. And, and, and it, it really, and the man especially needs to slow down. And that's what impotence does for a man. It causes, it forces him to slow down and essentially start matching the sexual response profile of the female. Mm -hmm. When that happens, um, that is when the earth, you know, quakes and, and opens up and the, you hear sky, you know, fireworks, but it's not just like one time, it is for hours. And, um, you know, men can learn an awful lot from women. And unfortunately, uh, they're too focused, you know, their brain shifts position and, uh, and uh, it's, uh, <laughs> they, um, you know, they just don't listen. And so this is why I say it's, it's very difficult for most normally functioning men to even get their head wrapped around this. Are you teaching this uh, anywhere to, 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 to people that have, uh, yeah. are having this issue? Yeah, I will be actually in about sixty to ninety days. Uh, I will be uh, teaching this. And well, where um, are you teaching it? Well, it'll be all online, actually. Online. Yeah, okay. all online. It yeah. won't be live workshops. <laughs> because well, I know that they do have, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that will come down the road. But uh, first, people really need to get the fundamentals, and the fundamentals can be taught online. And um, and, and, you know, it'll include things like where people will get to, on a weekly basis, measure their own uh, emotional as well as physical intimacy, you know, how long that they were, did they spend uh, when they were intimate. And, you know, I talk about things of like how you can make love in a crowded theater, you know. And uh, the first time my, my girlfriend and I went to a theater, uh, it was very crowded, and we made love that whole three-hour movie. And... Um, and, but it's not in the way that most people would, would constitute love. But I'll tell you this, it was far more powerful than most couples would ever experience. And, um, and so there's all kinds of ways to experience physical intimacy. And, and, um, uh, and, and when you, when you learn some of the basic principles, it is, it's like, oh yeah, Oh, yeah. Well, it's not difficult. And, you know, people are looking for pills or injections or herbs or supplements or whatever or devices. We we were blessed as human beings with having the ability to experience physical intimacy with our whole bodies. I mean, what she can do to my toes will send me right to the roof. Uh, and but you've got to be open to that. You know, and, and likewise, the way she can touch my arm feels like lightning bolts going through it. And it's uh, and vice versa. But it just doesn't happen. It's got you've got to, you know, be more in the present moment than goal oriented. If you if you go into an intimate situation with goal orientation, as most couples do, I should say most men do, um, you're you're going to greatly limit the quality of that experience. Okay, so it's, well, it's, and, yeah, I think it's, it's like you know everybody talks about the main attraction, and they forget there's like all these different side dishes that you can enjoy. Well, yeah, it, it, the only thing is, is that what I have found is that the main attraction isn't, you know, that's yeah, that's great, doesn't compare to everything else, and uh, and it's not like, let me put it this way, I ask people to rate their their physical intimacy if on a scale from zero to ten, zero being yeah, I could have rather would have read a book, and ten being oh my god, that was mind blowing. Well, you know, I would rate my normal intercourse experience as a ten, but what I'm doing now, or what my partner I'm doing now, is probably about a fifteen, and so it's it's an entirely different scale, and so this is this is the thing, it's it's. It, it's an entirely, it's almost like an entirely different language of, of, um, of physical intimacy. It's, it's almost like just speaking an entirely different language. Well, you, you need two people, you need a couple on the same page um, that like the same things, and whatever works for both of them, if both of them are getting an equal amount of enjoyment out of it, then it's, a, and it's great, no matter what you're doing. Yeah, and, and I think that also um, men especially. See, I think women are already attuned for this, um, and I. But I think men especially have to have to relearn what it means to be. Uh, I agree, and, and you know what? What are young men looking at today? They're looking at porn, which is completely unrealistic, and then they go out and they can't even 
they can't even have a normal relationship with a woman because they think, you know, if you're not doing what they're doing in, in the porn, then it's not sex. Well, not only that, not only is it unrealistic, everything in porn is by definition non-intimate. Not non right. it, 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 There is no emotional intimacy there. It is a physical act. And that's it. That's and, right. And that's it. That's they're they're losing ninety ninety nine percent of what's available. You know, and then the women are afraid. The young younger women, especially, are afraid to speak up and say, "Hey, what are you kidding me? You can't do that for twenty minutes, and, and you think that that's sex? That's ridiculous." But you know, and then it, it so it it just keeps on uh, going yeah. without any resolution. Yeah, and, and that's exactly right. And so you know, it's it's. But here's the thing in our society. Um, unless you have a, a are put into a situation where you really don't have much, you know, many other choices, only then will you be kind of open to this because the biological imperative is if it's hard, I know where I need, what I need to do with it and you're going to enjoy it and, you know, uh, et cetera. And it's, and that does not work well. It, it worked great, uh, you know, centuries ago when we needed to, you know, populate the planet. But we've evolved where physical intimacy now is a is a, an extremely important part of our evolution as a species from a from a uh, emotional and spiritual perspective. And and uh, most people are missing that tremendously. I think uh, I think we would agree with that because um, I don't hear too many happy stories these days, or it's not talked about at all, and it, it should be talked about all the time. And it's like it's still a hush hush, you know, topic that that people don't want to uh, reveal. So I'm glad that you're on talking about this because it needs to be talked about. Yeah, it really does. Most people are afraid to talk about it. Uh, uh, interestingly enough, more in this country than in other countries. Yeah, yeah, they think we're so progressive, but we're we're still pretty prudish. Very Victorian, um, yeah. you know, very, very Victorian still. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, – but you know what? That's okay. Uh, right now my focus is to help those couples who are, um, who are feeling the frustration and loss of impotence, and uh, I'm here to show them that this is a doorway to something more extraordinary than they ever, ever even imagined before anything was, quote, unquote, wrong. Sandra, do you want to oh. take us to the, to the close? I do. I do, Michael. I want to thank you for being here today. Linda, I want to thank you for answering and asking all these questions. You know, when I sat there like a stump, I am one of the people that it's hard to talk about this stuff, but I am so glad to be on the air with both of you so that we could open some doors for conversation for our listeners. Thank you very much, Linda, and thank you, Michael, for being here today. Thank you, everybody. We're so glad you joined us for Powered Up with Beck and Franklin. Sandra Beck, Los Angeles-based single mother and technology company owner, knows what it's like to be fit, funny, and fantastic in your 40s. Linda Franklin, a New Yorker with a successful